Hello everyone, I'm Brush Prince with another Total War Warhammer 2 match cast. This is the Warhammer World Championship match between True Bretonian and Exploding Hamster. Of course, this is the second group stage because it's still going on. Actually, it's basically finished by this point. Still, there's still more replays to cast, obviously. Anyway, this game, so we have the True Bretonian playing as... Bretonia, because why not? <laughs> His opponent, Exploding Hamster, is on the Tomb Kings. Now, time to go over the builds really, really quickly, because we want to do that. So, we're going to go over True Bretonian. First, we're going to have, uh, well, obviously, True Bretonian is Bretonia, so. <laughs> Finch Andres, two Paladins. Uh, looks like, yeah, everything's on horseback. Yep. It's expected. We do have four Peasant Mob. We have two Men at Arms. Uh, and then three men at arms with pole arms. We have five foot squires, one being the ROR. Uh, these there's but stone. We also have three knights of the realm. Now for the tombs king, tombs king, <laughs> tomb kings. <laughs> we have Arkan the Black. We do also have a unit of skeleton chariots. We have two necropolis knights with halberds. We do see a skeleton horseman as well. Front line. Well, we have four skeleton warriors and three. Uh, skeleton spearman and that's it so time to hit play watch what happens here so the bone giants already gonna be targeting something we'll see what it's targeting okay looks like it's trying to kill the beast layers of a stone at the moment I'm not trying to target these small nimble targets at this point though they're right in front of him let's see it's gonna change target ah, it's okay it's trying to kill the beast nope trying to get the cap now okay there's nothing super expensive that it could target, actually. I guess, so, yeah. No, like, questing knights or real knights or something that they could shoot, so, yeah. Okay, so that's a pretty good hit, because it does actually hit the fate plus whole arms. So, I mean, it's okay. It's not the best, but, yeah. I have Arkan on his chair just doing work here on the men at arms. That's what you'd expect. It can be annoying uh, at the start. Now we'll see these Necropolis Knights get a good charge here and then probably pull back. Let's see, ooh, the Bone Giant misses again. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a mistake from uh, the Doom Kings just staying in there for uh, a bit too long. Be like, uh, okay, looks like they're gonna get out. We do see a Spirit Leech on the Fae. Skeleton Chariot's doing work here. They need to disengage, though. There's a summon here, very good summon, which stops all the Bretonian units here. So this is good at this point. The Acropolis Knights need to disengage because now they're fighting men arms with pole arms. Good job here with the pole arms uh, engaging the Acropolis Knights. Peasant Mob engaging the Skeleton Spearman. Obviously, that's not going to go very well. We'll see what the Bone Giants are going to shoot at because, well, single Bow Giant. We do see a big fate of Buna here and a hit from the Bone Giant. There's an engagement here. Looks like Faye's doing well. Faye's doing very, very well here. Ark and the Black is being chased by a by a paladin, a single paladin. Here comes the Knights of the Realm here to finish off the Necropolis Knight. Engagement here, foot squires against the Necropolis Knights. More men at arms with pole arms coming in on in. This is kind of crazy, like so many pole arms actually. <laughs> so they are pretty well vetted, so interesting composition. Okay, though. So let's see, these pole arms are coming up here. Ooh, Knights of the Realm engaging here. This isn't the best engagement for them. They're actually going to go down because their spear support plus the halberds will eat them up. So that's not a good engagement for Bretonia. In the center, things seem to be going a lot better for Bretonia. Plus, the hero blob is coming on in. But, uh, oh, yeah. Spirit leeching her, but it's not going to do that much. Over time, it will, though. So, Knights of the Realm here taking out the skeleton chariots. Frontline engagement is going the way of Bretonia, you don't say this too often, but I mean they had foot squares, so they're gonna win that frontline engagement. Now balance power is still fairly even, so nothing to write home about for uh, anyone yet, but ooh, look the Fae here is starting to get her value because th there are a few units around her. So this is where she excels. Here comes the Knight, Knight of Realm unit onto Arkan, and that's gonna do well. There's a summon here. This is kind of a strange summon, though. Not the best angle for the summon, I suppose, but we'll see. It's like, uh, oh yeah, they're gonna 
attempt to come on in from the rear, which is good. Like, this is actually good because you want to lock them in there, but Arkan is in a lot of trouble there. Uh, looks like at this point, the Men Arms here are doing okay. Pull Arms disengaging, which is fairly interesting. Oh, it looks like they actually have a movement order to come around here and support the metal. The metal is going the way of Bretonian. This is what you'd expect because they have double paladin, they have the Fae. So that's that's very good engagement for them. Good squires here winning. Men at arms here with bow arms winning. And at this point it's looking like a Bretonian victory because the bone giant is now in melee. Probably didn't get too much value, so yeah, he's gonna pay for himself. And yeah. I guess this is gonna be it at this point, so it's time to enjoy some close-ups. Yeah, look at these bow arms just fighting against the skeletons here. I really like the art of Toon Kings. On the better designed uh, factions for sure. Here's the bone giant. Where are you going? Well, it looks like Faye plus the two paladins are chasing him, so he's not having a very nice time. He's really trying though, just look at him. Yep, not... Not working out though, for sure. And he looks so cool. And these units too. Arkan's still in play, but... What can he do here? I mean, he is on his chariot, and he can be quite effective, but... What do you do here? Oh, look at this ball arm. Just single guy here. They're getting clobbered by a lot of these units, actually. But, you know, takes them all out as they get disintegrated. Here is Arkin himself against the Fae. <laughs> okay, that was quite the funny animation. So that's a close victory for Bretonia. Very well done. Two Bretonian living up to his name and taking the win here. Good value on the Fae. Eh, Paladins did some work, but you know, we're still at full HP. So, Ball Arm surprisingly doing quite well. Beast Layers of Baston, yeah, expected them to do fairly well here. Nothing, you know. This Bretonian army can almost fight another battle at this point. <laughs> now for Exploding Hamster, we have some value on the other units, but yeah, nothing... Well, I guess Arkan got some value, but nothing else really did too great, and the Bone Jet especially definitely didn't pay for himself, so yeah. This was game one though, so we'll see if Exploding Hamster can make the comeback, which is interesting because I would have expected Exploding Hamster to win this match. It's definitely not over though. But a uh, good point for two Bretonian so far. Let's check out game two. Here we are with the second game between these two players, where we have the two Bretonian on the Vampire Coast, Exploding Hamster on the Greenskins. So let's start things off with the coast. We have Count Noctilus on, of course, his uh, out here, Necrofax Colossus. We do see besides that, four deck droppers, four hand gunners, two death guard, five zombie deck hand mob uh, pole arms. Yeah, zombie pirate deck hand mob pole arms. Such long names. <laughs> and three of the regular zombie pirate deck hand mob uh, units. Okay, now for exploding hamster, it's green skins. Oh, well, we have a pretty cool build here, so so far we do see. From the paunch, we should see an orc shaman somewhere as well. There he is. Uh, we have a unit of orc boar chariots hidden over there. Up front, uh, looks like a mix of, well, basically four orc boys, a unit of nasty skulkers, two ROR knight goblins, uh, basically. So they have both uh, been brought into the field, or have they not? I'm not sure. I don't see him here, but yeah, oh, there they are. Okay, never mind. The Warlord's boys are there. Last but not least, we have five Orc Rare Boys and four Night Goblin Archers. Uh, 
one of them being the um, what what do you call it? Yes, the Arwar. No, no, no. Four. Yes, five worker boys, five night goblin archers. So that's ten archers. That's a lot. All right, let's hit play and see what happens at this point. See the deck droppers moving up as you'd expect. However, deck droppers moving up does mean that you know they shouldn't really take a head-on fight against all these archers because they will obviously get slaughtered. So they should come in at an angle. And we already see, yeah, Vindictive Glare onto Deck Robbers, killing one of them. So that's kind of. That actually got two kills because it hit the other unit as well. Interesting. Yep, we do have Noctus coming on in. Looks like he's starting to target a unit of Savage or Rare Boys, which is kind of in a loose formation and is behind the Night Goblin Archers. So I wonder if that's the best target. We'll see though. And obviously, it's, he's going to have a very hard time trying to hit Grom, but. Warport Chariots are preparing to hit uh, here though, so we'll see later on. That card here uh, is a huge liability. Because this unit is not going to be able to, you know... It's very expensive, so I don't think against this particular composition especially it's going to do well. But we'll see, I mean it has 90 armor, sure, but it has no. there are no shields, so it's not blocking a lot of missiles. Deck droppers coming in from the side. Four chariots are coming out, so they have been discovered. Uh, looks like, yeah, the, so what the coast has to do here, they have to attack because there's no way in a prolonged fight they will be able to win out against the missiles of uh, the greenskins. So they find themselves in a peculiar uh, situation. It's like Rom's like also a little bit crazy here because he's gonna get shot at. Does just fine though. Looks like there's a summon here. Deck droppers coming on through, looks like they are looking for a target, but at this point, yeah, the depth, depth card, uh, yeah, they killed an Orpho unit, but they're gonna go down now, as you can see here. Warlords boys here against the Polar, I'm surprisingly losing so far, interesting. Depth cards, yeah, trying to engage the rest of the errors. Deck droppers here being engaged, good job with the deckhands mob here engaging as well. Another summon here to annoy these Night Goblin archers. Deck droppers trying uh, their best, but there are so many units in the back here not doing anything for the coast. This is a huge problem. Looks like the chariots do end up getting through, but these units in the back need to move forward. Finally, they're moving forward, but they've been forgotten, which is huge. And even though at this point it looks pretty... I mean, the front uh, line is kind of okayish for the coast because they're doing a lot here, but imagine if there were like other units just annoying the hell out of greenskins, but... Because right now, these units are fine, and they're able to dish out their damage, which is going to turn things, I would say, fairly heavily in, in favor of uh, Greenskins, and ooh, now the guns are engaged in combat. We wouldn't have, have had that if the Polar Arms were there. It's a nice use of Noctilus ability here as well. He's going to engage the Orc Shaman. Starting to get targeted, though, so that he's not going to like that. The Droppers here dying as well. These ones will end up dying too. Handguns are trying to run away, but Noctilus is starting to take a lot of damage. Looks like he does go for a summon here just to annoy all of these archers, so they probably should reposition like right over here. Noctilus is very low at this point. Uh, that cast didn't really do much. Electropper's still alive here, annoying some night common archers, but at this point it's really looking. This is the game for Greenskins. Well, it's. Yeah, Noctilus is really trying to hack himself, but he's getting hit by Grom, he's getting hit by the Orc Shaman, he's getting targeted. So some archers are still in combat with units they shouldn't be in combat with. Surprisingly, the step card is still alive, but it's going to get targeted now. Orcboard Chariot's coming on through. Deck Dropper's jumping in melee here just to keep these units busy, but again, handguns get caught. Noctilus is still alive, which is obviously good, but... Yeah, this is... Uh, ooh, the Orc Border Chariots are gonna go down here, so very well done by those handguns. With handguns still alive... Ooh, that's that's a vindictive glare that kind of misses, actually. We'll see that... Yeah, Savage Orc Border Boy is gonna get targeted. Yep, taking some damage, but still... These units need to be pushing forward for the coast now, because they're sitting here doing nothing. They could be doing work. This is actually gonna do some work. Yeah, that's that's pretty good damage. Ooh. 
There we go. Knock the boy with his uh, Wraith Storm ability onto Orc Shaman. I think these Fallen Arms here will win because that's just a few uh, units. And actually, it's still pretty close. Pretty close game. Surprising, despite the Fallen Arms that were basically forgotten. So at this point, yeah, the Greenskins still have a lot of missiles with um, ammo. So I would say that they're still going to take it. But it's not decided. It's still not decided. Yeah, there's another missile unit even here as well. So, yeah. These have like a bunch of entities left. Like 40, 59, 47. That's quite a few. They're gonna do well here. Ooh, the handguns are in uh, range now. Oh, look at the Orc Shaman here. Terrified and taking a lot of damage. Someone here is gonna be able to deal with the Night Goblin Archers actually. If they route off the field, it's gonna be huge because they're probably gonna route this way and they're so close to the white line, right? So, droppers being annoying. Handgun is doing work, but actually one of them is really prohibiting fire here. It's it's being obstructed by the unit with fewer entities, so... Should it be moved to the side actually over here, because it's not getting the best angle from there. Well, obviously. Noctil is trying to take out the Orc Shaman here. Actually misses, okay. So now these handguns here, they're trying to engage uh, these Night Goblin Archers, and it's so close at this point. It's like deck droppers could be coming in to annoy those Night Goblins as well. We have more deck droppers coming on in. Orc Shaman's still alive. Grom the Paunch is... Still hasn't hit his regen cap, uh, so that's gonna be very good for him. Deck Dropper is being targeted. Handguns also doing work here. Ooh, are they on guard mode? They probably are not on guard mode because these are 65 handguns that are not shooting the missiles there. That is huge. The small arms here could be going on in to attack those archers. So definitely some is micro here from the coast, which can be seen. Units are still not firing. Still engaged in melee. That is that is very, very important. At this point, looks like Ground the Punch is coming on in and he's gonna hit straight for these pole arms it's gonna be a raid storm cast though so we'll see how much it does do to him oh my goodness that that was a lot and now we can see his uh heal cap okay still very very close game this is really intense at this point deck droppers are still alive these uh pole arms are doing work oh but the green skins have more missiles coming back Oh, what a hit onto Grom. He's at 400 HP. That was, that was brutal. Brutal. These handguns are engaging the Night Goblins, so that's not good for them. Looks like this unit needs to be get taken out here because it is quite close to the white line. So, uh, yeah. And it's 39 of them. Deck Dropper is really chasing off Grom. They need to keep chasing him because if he comes back, he's... It's gonna be trouble for uh, Coast for sure. And right now, Coast has the balance of power in their favor. However, a bunch of their units are crumbling. Leadership here is very, very spicy, so to say. Warlord's Boy is gonna get a good charge off here, though. And Noctilus, yeah, he's getting work done, but this unit is getting shot down, which is gonna change the balance of power. I wonder if the, these two units, how much damage they'll be able to do. The full arms here fighting against 12 Night Goblins. Noctus firing, getting a good vo volley there. Good shot. But now it's kind of soon to be Noctus and oh my goodness! Grom the Ponge is back! He's back and he is running away. He has survived the deck droppers that were chasing him. Which is very unfortunate for uh, the coast because had he died here Right off the field, this... Well, this still wouldn't have been over because... There's still a few missiles here, which... If uh, if they kite properly... It'll do work, so... Ooh, this is a big invocation of the heck on Noctilus. Very, very helpful indeed. Alarms here, getting kited by... Uh, green skin archers. Very interesting, but... This point. It's it's getting worse and worse as time goes on for for the coast because Grom is healing. He's coming back to the fight, and this unit is going down. Ooh, the Night Goblin Archers shattered. That is huge, though. 
And these units are with... Ooh, they're, they're not off the field. Even though they have 16 leadership. One shot would do them in here. Potentially, especially with this formation. So they need, we need to see one shot from Noctilus into this. But, oh, he's actually going to go in and attack the infantry. I'm not sure if that's what he wants to do. I think he should just give a volley into that unit. That would be huge. It does actually shatter the orpoid there. The Depth Droppers is chasing off Grom, but Grom is still alive. And he's in very good shape. Yeah, we need to see Noctilus get a good volley into this one, and that's gonna route it, probably. He has ammo. Is he... He has vision, so it's, it's pretty crazy that he's... Okay. Not actually firing. Come on. Okay, that's not what I expected to see. Oh, there's a summon! That's gonna be... Oh, that's not gonna work out, is it? It's not gonna route this unit. It, they are touching them, but are they able to route them? Zero leadership. Just zero. It's barely not negative. And these units shatter off the field. This unit shatters too. This is huge. However, was that a mistake? Not waiting for a heck. Oh, and look at the deck droppers here. They were kind of trying to fight Grom, who's still on lowish HP. Noctilus here engaging the Orc Shaman, who's getting terrified, and now he's gonna get shot at by Noctilus. Vampire Coast. They seem to be winning this. Ooh. Orc Shaman routing off the field. Rump the Punch still alive, so that balance of power was so much in the favor of Coast, but it's no longer the case. And this this unit is going to actually disintegrate. Because it is a summon. Even though the Orc Shaman is getting hit pretty hard by Noctilus. And look at the Night Goblins. There's still two Night Goblins actually tickling Noctilus here. They are actually still tickling Noctilus. Okay. Noctilus is doing it. Yeah, he's making a mistake here. He needs to be targeting the, either the Orc Shaman or Grom. Actually, I would target Grom at this point because that is the, the target that could do you in. Oh no, for, uh, for Noctilus. And oh yes, for Grom, the balance of power is also changing. At this point. It was an insane game, but it is going the way of the greenskins here. Nothing that Noctilus can do at this point. Uh, even though he's trying his best to, sh to snipe out Grom, but he does fall. And there he goes. Ghost loses this, which is... Very surprising considering how the battle was going, but also very surprising considering how well the battle was going for Greenskins earlier. So this switched hands quite a lot, but Noctilus the value. Wow. Death Guard, yeah, they, they did more work than I anticipated, but yeah, handguns don't work. Droppers mostly not doing the best, but yeah, the value on Noctilus is huge. Oh my goodness, that Orc Shaman, massive value. 2k. Uh, yep, the ROR Night Goblin's doing fantastically here. But yeah, obviously this, the missiles would do well for the Green Skins because that's the core of this army. No issues here. Well, True Bretonian, I, I don't know about the two Death Guard, but sure. I mean, it's not like I played this matchup from the coast side, but I don't think, well, against this build specifically, I don't think that they're gonna be a great unit. Um, and that, I guess the build's pretty good, but the problem was here, just these units in the back not pushing forward to keep the guns safe and to annoy the enemy greenskins to have to kite because they could just sit there and shoot for more than they should have. This is game two though, so this means it's a 1-1. And we're going to head on to an exciting game three. Well, at least, hopefully, exciting. And here we are with the final game of this match. 
Yes, indeed, it has gone to a game three between the true Bristonian and exploding hamster. We have uh, in this final game Norska for the true Bristonian and Empire for exploding hamster. So, whoops, let's have a look at the builds. The true Bristonian, well, we do have a Froggy, Shaman Sorcerer of Death, Three Chaos Marauders, or I guess it's just Marauders for Norska. Four uh, Marauder Berserkers, four Skin Wolves, of which two are the Armored Variant, two Norskan Ice Wolves as well. Now on the other side, we have uh, Exploding Hamsters Empire, sitting over here, nice and cozy, camping, which is fine, because, you know, it's, uh, it's a, it is a valid tactic to use. Let's take a look at the situation. So we have Volkmar the Grim, an Amber Wizard, Albaster Polyguns, Knights of the Bla two Knights of the Blazing Sun, three Hand Gunners, one being ROR, four Spearmen with Shields, two Flagellants, one being the ROR as well. So against Norska, like this is all uh, an approach you can take, which is like take it easy and camp it out and force them to come to you. They usually are gonna do that, I suppose, as it is fairly rush heavy. Faction. Wait, that's a bright wizard, not an amber wizard. My bad. What was I saying? <laughs> so yeah, this is, this is a very very good setup here from the Empire. I do do like it. Well, I don't know if it, it's a very very good setup, but at least I like how he has set himself uh, up here. We'll see if uh, it's good enough to stop the Norskans here. There's also another approach with like uh, more. Huntsman Archer focused uh, kind of uh, playstyle with the Empire, but it's not meant to be here. Archer focus isn't uh, what we're having here, but the handguns, handguns could do quite well to, to shout the damage against the large units here. But we'll see. Marauders getting targeted currently? I'm not sure. Well, the Hellblaster Polyguns are doing work. Okay, so the Bright Wizard here is in quite some trouble. Right, so the Blazing Sun, they're gonna be ready, and yeah, nice uh, pullback from the Norsecan Ice Wolves. They're gonna get shot though, so one of them is down, and they've taken some HP damage, so good start by the Empire. We need to see some charges coming in here, very nicely done. Okay, Knights of the Blazing Sun, straight into Marauder Berserkers, and they need to pull out immediately because Norsecan Ice Wolves are coming on in. So that's not what they want to see, and maybe they're just gonna go this way and hit the back of the Marauder Berserkers. That would be some very cheeky maneuvering. Looks like they don't want to do that though, because they're already getting chased, so they want to be safe. They, if that's the case, they should have gone over here, but yeah, it looks like they are, but they might still lose a bunch. Uh, so yeah, is that gonna be a banishment here? Looks like that's to be the case, but oh no, it goes... <laughs> perfectly how the Empire would have not wanted it to go, so it just wipes out their Sigmar Suns. <laughs> now the thing is, hand cannons are engaged here with the Skin Wolves. That's not the way you want things to go. Norse guns are coming around uh, the rear here, Hell Blaster Volley guns doing work. It feels like, you know, the, the Norse guns are getting into the units that they need to. Handgunners are uh, exposed here, definitely compromised. There's this unit here. This unit here as well, that's in melee with Marauder Berserkers of all units, so that's not gonna go well for it. More Skin Wolves coming in as well, so... We'll see. These Skin Wolves pushing on through. We'll see what happens here, but the Knights of the Blazing Sun are here to support our skin units, and wow, okay. That was, uh... It's an attempt to take out those Berserkers. Skin Wolves are alive though, and Skin Wolves, you know, if, as long as you don't lose entities, they're gonna heal periodically, so yeah. Ormrar Berserkers coming back, but is is the rush of Nor Norska starting to attrition down? There may not be a lot of infantry left for Norska. If that's the case. Oh, there's still a bunch of skin wolves and the Marauder Berserkers here. Another unit that comes back here, so yeah. Yeah, those skin wolves don't want to fight against spearmen. 
That was a very good trade for uh, the Empire. And they have guns. They have the Hellblaster Volley guns as well. That's a lot. Uh, oh, and the Norskans actually taking a brief pause here before attacking the handguns. There are spears to defend them. There's Knights of the Blazing Sun as well to defend them. We actually refuse to defend them. Okay. So, oh, the Norskan Ice has got a move order and not an actual attack order. Which means that they're not actually gonna do the job here. But yeah. Very good situation right now for the Empire. With the Silver Bullets uh, trying to do damage to the Skin Wolves. These Spearmen here are holding valiantly. Two of them Spearmen with shields. It's doing the work that uh, the uh, Volkmar commands them to. Definitely proud sons of the Empire. Well, most of them are not coming back home today, but, you know, even the ones who aren't, you know, they've earned their glory. Alright, so Skinwolf's coming in. Uh, they're targeting Volkmar. Uh, that's not really going to be enough. We also have these silver bullets here, which might turn around and start firing into the Skinwolves. Good cast here from Volkmar. Woohoo. Yep. Nice uh, damage uh, being done here by... What's the ability called? Because I keep forgetting. Oh my goodness. Alright, Volkmar. Yes, it's Grand Soulfire. How could I forget that ability? <laughs> yeah, the balance of power is getting more even. And looks like Norsk is... Getting some work done here. Okay. Some more skin was coming around. Shaman Sorcerer actually taking out the Bright Wizard. It's huge right now. A lot of routing for... Uh, yeah. Okay, so we need to keep seeing the Norskans just chase these units off. But they don't have a lot of units themselves to chase with, so... Yeah. These Ice Wolves here... Are trying to take out the Bright Wizard. So he is definitely losing HP. Norskans could disengage here as they're fighting this unit. Oh, but they were not chasing these units, and these, because these units came back, this is huge. Those handguns might also come back, potentially, but maybe not, actually. We'll see. There's a misplay here uh, with these skin wolves. They're going to get shot at, and they're going straight into spears. Oh, this is a huge loss for uh, Norskans. This is not the engagement they wanted to be in. However, more ice wolves coming in. They're gonna hit the handgunners, and they were not defended by Knights of the Blazing Sun. Soon definitely took a lot of damage, though. More skin wolves coming on in. Looks like they're trying to get the rear of these Tatter Souls. Hellblaster Volley Gun still alive. This unit isn't coming back yet. More Ice Wolves. The thing is, there's a bunch of spearmen. They have the Tatter Souls in pretty good shape. And what is gonna take out a Volkmar is the real question, because there's no Throg. I don't even know where Throg went. It is the shame of Sorcerer of Death, though, so maybe some Spirit Leeches will do work, but... It's not looking good for Norska, but they definitely made us very, very close and exciting. So hopefully, yeah, thankfully it wasn't a rather exciting game as I predicted before, or as I hoped for, you know. So now we're gonna see the shame of Sorcerer of Death. Oh, it was actually being shot at by the handgunners, which... Okay, shattered. More skin wolves, and looks like a valiant defeat. I suppose Norska conceded. There, but let's look at value. Ooh, Throg got nothing done. I didn't see what he did, unfortunately. Berserk is getting some value. Yeah, look at the skin wolves here. I mean, Ice Wolves actually did grand job this unit. Now for the Empire. Holy. Yep, yep, yep. Volkmar, Volkmar. Also, but keep in mind, I think the damage value here also counts friendly fire, so that friendly banishment. Not the kind of damage you want to have. Flashlands here, we have Sigmar Suns. Wow, look at the Tatter Souls. My goodness, 1300. The values is real. Silver Bullets as well. And wow, the Cell Blaster Volley Guns. Pretty awesome game. But anyway, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Follow me on social media. I'll see you all next time.